Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Securing the Built Environment. This is episode 148 and in this video we're going to talk about end-to-end -end encryption. And we're going to cover a few things in this video. Number one, what is end-to-end -end encryption? Number two, why is end-to-end -end encryption really more important than ever today? Number three, does Apple use end-to-end -end encryption in iMessage? And then we're going to talk about a few other services that use end-to-end -end encryption and some things that you should be aware of when looking for end-to-end -end encryption in what you're doing online. If you find this video useful or you like it, please uh, like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So number one, what is end-to-end -end encryption? Well, end-to-end -end encryption is a communications technology that allows two or more users to communicate with each other uh, in a way that is completely secure and can't be read or viewed or uh, understood by anybody other than those two people or the people that are involved in the communication. And what happens is the process uses something called public key encryption. And below this video, I'll link to an article where I provide a diagram for how this works, but basically, in public key encryption, there uh, each user or each party, say a party of two, a communication between two parties, each party, the sender and the recipient, has a public key and a private key. And when the uh, sender is sending a message, they will write the message in plain text on their device, like an iPhone or an Android device, and they will use the recipient's public key that the recipient shares with the sender to encrypt the message. And then the mes message is sent, it's encrypted all the way through from the time it's sent from the sender's device to the recipient's device. And then the recipient uses their private key, which they don't share with anybody, to decrypt the message that was encrypted using their public key that they can share with anyone that they want to, that they want to communicate with. And it happens the same way in reverse, uh, you know, so just the same process in reverse. And that allows the communications to be encrypted all the way from the sender's device all the way to the recipient's device. And in a way that not even the service provider, so it could be Apple or uh, Facebook with WhatsApp or Signal or, you know, any company that's providing these communication services, they can't even read those messages. They can't decrypt them because they don't have the uh, the proper key pair in order to be able to do that. So that provides security uh, for communications. Now, number two, why is end-to-end -end encryption more important than ever today? Well, it's uh, you may be aware of an ongoing issue with something called a the, the Salt Typhoon hack. And this uh, hack is a situation that is ongoing. It's been going on for at least months, if not years, where foreign uh, countries have hacked into our communications infrastructure and apparently have the ability to view communications between uh, individuals on these communications networks. So I think the AT&T network, uh, Verizon, all these communications networks, cell networks, are basically exposed because they have hackers in them that are able to supposedly view these messages. And what just happened recently was the FBI came out with some guidance where they basically said they want people to use end-to-end -end encryption to, in their communications. And this is funny because I'll actually, in this, I'll show you a video now of a of testimony uh, from an, a, an Apple attorney uh, arguing essentially in Congress with uh, the FBI who's trying to get them to provide like a backdoor to allow the FBI to, to decrypt the communications that Apple provides with end-to-end -end encryption. And I'll show you this video. Too dangerous. They are asking for a backdoor into the iPhone, specifically to build a software tool that can break the encryption system which protects personal information on every iPhone. As we have told them, and as we've told the American public, building that software tool would not affect just one iPhone. 
It would weaken the security for all of them. In fact, just last week, Director Comey agreed, and I think we heard the same here today, that the FBI would likely use this as precedent for other cases involving other phones. We agree this is not about access to one iPhone. The FBI is asking Apple to weaken the security of our products. Hackers and cyber criminals could use this to wreak havoc on our privacy and personal safety. And as you can see in the video, it's, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 they're pushing back on this. And what enabled this to happen is was some legislation that happened in the 90s called CALEA. And again, below this video, I'll go into more detail on that, that basically required uh, communications infrastructure providers to provide a backdoor into uh, their networks to allow law enforcement to pursue uh, surveillance uh, in situations where they were legally allowed to do so. And that caused an issue where that back door was not secure enough. And so uh, that was one of the ways that apparently hackers got access to these networks. So end-to-end -end encryption is more important today, whether you're just concerned about this issue with Salt Typhoon, or you're just worried about, you know, like companies having access to your data and just getting access to whatever you're doing. Uh, that is, you know, a way you can protect yourself using end-to-end -end encryption. So. Number three, what companies are using end-to-end -end encryption and does Apple iMessage use end-to-end -end encryption? So Apple iMessage does use end-to-end -end encryption when communicating with other iMessage users. So if you're communicating with, communicating with an Apple, another Apple device on iMessage and it's two Apple iPhone users or two people using iCloud, mess, you know, iMessage through iCloud, then that will be end-to-end -end encrypted. But it won't be end-to-end -end encrypted if you're using it to communicate with an Android user. So Android to iPhone communications via text are not end-to-end -end encrypted, encrypted. And so to, to communicate that way across platforms, you'll want to use a, another service like WhatsApp or uh, Signal or another service that would provide end-to-end -end encryption. Now, one other thing you can look into is using a VPN. A VPN provides a secure tunnel uh, to encrypt data in transit all the way across from the sender to the recipient. Now, a VPN is a, uh, there are many, many types of VPNs out there. Um, and so you have to be careful when using a VPN because in theory, the VPN provider could be, could be reading your, your, your messages. If they, even if they say they're not, you have to trust that they're not. And so at the end of the day, you're kind of trusting somebody in the use of one of these encryption services. Uh, unless it's impossible for the service provider to read your messages in a way that is verifiable. And uh, unless they're using an open source platform where it's verifiable by third party security researchers, you just don't know whether they're using it or not, which is actually something that Apple in their new Apple intelligence software has made uh, clear is that they want the security in Apple intelligence to be verifiable from third party security researchers. So that's a nice, feature as more and more of our communications we rely on artificial intelligence and other things like that. So um, anyway, that's in a nutshell. End-to-end uh, -end encryption is really, re really important today. It provides a way for two people to communicate with each other using uh, public key encryption. And if you use Apple iMessage with another Apple user or people in your family who all have iPhones, then it's already encrypted. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, Android to Android also would be encrypted, um, but if you're going cross-platform, you're going to want to use a third-party service like Signal or WhatsApp. And um, yeah, so that's it. If you found this video useful, please uh, like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. I hope this was useful and have a great day.